Okay, our next inductee, I'm so excited. Uh, Lester Hudson is going into the Hall of Fame. Two-time All-American, two-time OBC Male Athlete of the Year, and two-time OBC Player of the Year from Memphis, Tennessee. Hudson dazzled on the hardwood as the Skyhawks set the OBC record for most points in a single season, 880 in 2008-2009. Second in the nation with 27.5 points per game, trailing only eventual two-time NBA Most Valuable Player, Stephen Curry for Davidson, that year. And we were watching that, and it was back and forth. And I still think you're better than Steph Curry, by the way. Um, and uh, it was a phenomenal season. He helped Martin to a school record 22 wins, first OBC regular season championship, first Division I postseason appearance. And during his debut season, he compiled what was known as the quadruple-double game. And he had a quadruple-double at the Elam Center. The first in Division I history, the only since then, 25 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 steals against Central Baptist on November 13, 2007. I want to start by saying, Lester, that when you look back, and, and Jerry did it and Donnie did it, when you look back in your life, there are certain things that stand out. Rarely when you're in the middle of that do you realize that, holy cow, this is special. I really got to pay attention to this and absorb it. Uh, for me, honestly, and I, I'm not flattering you, I think of the birth of my son, I think of Haley's Comet in 1986, and I think of you. Because we knew, we knew that you were something that we would probably never, ever see again. Before Christophs Porzingis were the unicorn, you, you, or you were the unicorn, because we knew this is a once-in-a-lifetime event watching Lester Hudson play. You agree with me, right? Everybody in this room will shake their head. To this day, when we travel, other broadcasters and other people from other athletic departments ask about you and tell stories about you. Coach Brett Campbell, your coach, said that uh, in 33 years of coaching, he's the most competitive, talented, and complete player he has ever seen. As a matter of fact, Brett Campbell was talking to Donnie Tindall last week, who coached Morehead State with Fareed when you were at UT Martin. And as you all know, Tindall went on to coach Tennessee, Southern Miss, coached at LSU, coached the G League. Donnie Tindall told uh, Brett Campbell that you were the best basketball player he ever coached against, ever. And my opinion is when somebody's saying something about you and you're not even in the room, they mean it. They mean it, and that's high praise. And I think a ton of coaches would say that. You know this. Jason James is here. I really don't know if Jason James would have been at UT Martin if Lester Hudson would be at UT Martin. I don't know. And Jason James was such a big part of that. And it was just amazing to see Jason's influence on you, Lester. Coach James told me, and I love this quote, if you were to lay down on your couch and go to sleep and dream up ways to score a basketball, Lester's done it. <laughs> there is not a basket he can't get. And I believe that. It, phenomenal. Coach James told me the story at Vanderbilt. We were talking about this game last night at Vandy. Lester had 36 points, nine rebounds, six assists, and you hit seven threes. And after the game, an older gentleman who was a season ticket holder at Vanderbilt told Coach that that was the best performance he had ever seen at Memorial Gymnasium. And then the guy said, and I saw Pistol Pete play. <laughs> No, I mean, and we got that all the time. I, I, I know we're short on time, so I can't keep talking, but everywhere we went, fans were wanted to see you, then they would heckle you, and then they loved you. It was the most amazing thing. I want to quickly talk about the quadruple double game because it's one of the few things that's happened on this campus that's never happened before and might not ever happen again. It's the only time it's ever happened in the history of Division I basketball. It happened at the Elam Center. Uh, four NBA players have done it, including Hakeem Olajuwon and David Robinson. It has not been done since 1994. It was phenomenal what you did that day. That was November 13, 2007. I asked Brett about it, I asked Coach James about it, I asked Lester about it last night. We all kind of had different memories of it. Um, I want to give you the quick story. 25 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 steals. He had double digits in four categories. You see a lot of triple doubles, you never see a quadruple double. It's almost impossible. Uh, Lester did it and played 31 minutes of a 40-minute game. If he would have been in the game, he might have had a quint, whatever. He could have had five, ten blocks too, right? Um, I'll, I'll just absolutely never forget it. Here's how it went down in my eyes and collaborating with the others who were there. I was doing the game with former women's assistant basketball coach Lou DeFeo, who was a coach, so he really watched stats. We had a snappy tomato pizza stat monitor in front of us, and we're watching it as the game's going on. And you've almost got the triple-double, but then we realized that you've got eight or nine steals. We're like, good grief, he might have a quadruple-double. And he looks at me and he goes, I don't know if that's ever happened before. So last media timeout, two guys are at the scorer's table, and they're going to take you out of the game. And you've almost got a quadruple-double. Lou DeFeo 
texted or went and talked to Joel Lafaro. Where's Joe back there? Joe alerted the coaching staff who told the person who was set to check in the game for Lester to go sit back down on the bench and Lester go in there. Lester, you need a steal. And I don't even know if Lester was aware that he needed a steal when he got back in the game. He's just kind of standing there because we were up big, I assume. I think we won pretty big. The coaches staff is yelling at Lester, you need a steal, you need a steal. He's like, what? <laughs> you need a steal. He immediately goes up to the guy who's dribbling the basketball, steals it, and then dunks and got the quadruple up. In the last 37 seconds of that game that he played, he had a rebound, a steal, an assist, and a dunk to get the quadruple double. So the story is even bigger than it is when you just look at the quad double. Google it, it's phenomenal. Lester, I have one other thing to say. If someone told me I could watch every game you ever played, but I had to watch all of them, like I had to watch every single one of them, I'm in. I would do it. I would do it without, it might take me 10 years, but I would do it. As you know, went on to play for the Celtics, the Grizzlies, the Cavs, the Wizards, the Clippers, drafted in the NBA by the Celtics. Uh, you got to tell Ron and Perkins and all those guys that are commenting on Instagram, you're Hall of Famer, Lester Hudson, that game, not Lester Hudson. Chinese Basketball Association's all-time leading scorer and still putting up big numbers and planning on going back in a couple of months. A true rock star and a legend there and a legend at the University of Tennessee at Martin. I'm truly appreciative for all you've done for this university and you are now a Hall of Famer. Put your hands together for Lester Hudson. Oh, by the way, taking pictures. So after the quadruple double game, we're at Snappy Tomato Pizza doing Skyhawk talk. And I asked Trudy and Brian to print out Brian with here, but I asked it, Joe, I guess, to print a box score. So I'm reading the box score. I have the actual box score. Right, I've got the box score. So after the interview, I hand the box score to Lester and I'm like, would you sign this? I'm like, this has never happened in history. So I'm thinking, he's going to think I'm stupid. He signed the box score. So Lester signs the, books, the box score and he looks at me and he goes, can I have one of those? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a really uh, special day for me, you know, special day for my family. You know, uh, I didn't write a speech down or whatever. I just wanted to come in. It's talking about about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, uh, Coach Danny texted me. He was like, man, you ready for uh, Hall of Fame? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. He was like, uh, don't you know you got to uh, at least write a speech, you know, five minute speech? I'm like, huh? You know, I'm like, think I, I'm like, I'm thinking I should come up here and just get the award, take a picture, smile, you know, you know, but uh, anyway, I want to thank the men above, you know, uh, my God, you know, first and foremost, uh, I want to accomplish anything you know, in the past, and I want to be here today, and I want to accomplish anything forward, you know, without him, so uh, I want to thank my mom, rest in peace with her, she passed a couple months ago from cancer, and uh, I love she smiled down on me, just, it hurt me a little bit, you know, it hurt me a lot, so uh, I want to thank my dad, uh, my wife here, my kids, uh, my main man, Coach Jane. I can't, you know, uh, thank him enough. He's been there for me a lot. And, uh, I might miss a lot of people, you know, when you get to the yard. to help me out. It was, uh, man, it was so many. I can't even uh, thank everybody. If I had to write it down, it would be like a 30 minute, you know, speech. But uh, I want to thank my coach uh, from high school, Coach Apple White. He never gave up on me, man. I was out of school, you know, and things like that, and he never let my time go on those. You know, he uh, came back to my neighborhood and helped me, you know, get a dream college and everything, you know. He's very, very special to me. My uh, dream college coach, Coach Sales, uh, was phenomenal for me and uh, helped me out a lot. I want to go to the story where, how I got to UT. Okay, well, I thought I was, you know, as a college, I mean, not in college, but in high school, playing, you know, a game or in practice. But Coach James told me, no, you was playing PE, you weren't even in school, you know, I was just, I wasn't even on the team. So um, he came to talk to me, and that's my first time hearing about UT Martin Pitt. Like, you know, when you're young, you always want to go to North Carolina, do and things like that. But, you know, Coach James, I was probably like 16, I don't remember, but uh, he came to me after PE, I wasn't even on the team at the time. but. Uh, you know, he told me about UT Martin, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, whatever, you know, whatever. But anyway, I go to junior college. He's come back again. He's going to change again. So, you know, I'm like, oh. So he was, you know, got to know him a little bit more and things like that. But uh, I had, a, if y'all probably don't know, I had the opportunity to go to the University of Memphis and register. I had the opportunity to go to the University of Colorado. 
had an uh, opportunity to go to TSU, Tennessee, Austin P, Seymour, and all the kind of schools. But all of them guys were talking about the NBA. Well, I'm going to get you to the NBA, get you to the NBA, get you to the NBA. Coach James came in and was like, man, I don't know what you're doing on the basketball court. You know, he was like, it's up to you. Whatever you're doing on the basketball court, it's up to you. But I can promise you one thing, you know, I know you need help academics wise and things like that, and I'm trying my best to point you in the right direction and get your diploma. And it was very, very big because nobody in my family ever had a college degree. So, you know, as time went on, you know, something just telling me, like everybody, my friends, family, it was like, UT Martin, man, it's boring and everything like that. So, the <coughs> University of Memphis, too much distraction. TSU, too much distraction. So one day, the campus came to me, he was like, you gotta go to UT Martin. I had never visited campus at all. I said, I haven't seen campus. So I called Coach James and said, I'm gonna go to UT Martin. So I think my dad brought me up. And you know, if somebody had, like from a city come to see UT Martin, and they first see the campus, they don't, you know, me personally, I was like, but everybody else would have been like, oh, heck, I'm going back home. But me, at the time, I was like, oh, this is my place. This is my home. Because in my mind, at the time, I wanted to like uh, focus on academics, you know, and focus on basketball. And um, man, I can't thank the tutors enough, man. I don't remember the names, but uh, man, they helped me out a lot. Night and day, I had morning tutors, I had night tutors, you know, red shirt gear, and um, I got in the gym and, and practiced on my shot and, and, and worked out in the weight room with Coach Rayburn. I know we got hard with Coach Rayburn. And um, man, UT Martin meant a lot to me, I'll be honest with you, man. It was just like, uh, soon when I got here, they, everybody embraced me with open arms, uh, my family, and um, it's meant a lot to me, you know. I don't think I would accomplish anything without, you know, my teammates, you know, my teammates, the fans, uh, the athletic department. Um, man, I'm just a little, a little uh, emotional right now, so I'm sorry because it's a great honor to be in the Hall of Fame. I never thought I would ever be in the Hall of Fame anywhere, you know, coming from where I came from. But uh, this means a lot to me, you know, if I forgot anybody, uh, through the university, you know, man, man, Jerry, you know, uh, everybody, Trudy, you know, Danny, the trainers, uh, I'm just emotional right now, but uh, I'm just going to thank everybody for you, know, you too, Martin, thanks for the Hall of Fame, but the, everybody that dealt with me today, I want to say, uh, congratulations, it's a great honor for me, so you guys, thank you.